Alrighty, welcome to the Weasley update. I'm Aiden Weiss. I'm, uh, I'm fucked up, and I'm ready to ramble. Whoop whoop. All right, this is episode three. I'm recording this on December twenty fourth. It's Christmas Eve, bitches. Um, yeah, I'm I'm pretty pumped because I always said that I would record at least three before I released one, but I might try to do one or two more. Who knows? Because it's bi weekly, it's all going to be so fucking dated anyways i'm gonna have to catch up on that at some point well there is a lot to talk about since the last time i uh i jumped on the mic first of all i only plan on being stoned for this episode per usual but my mom gave me a drink of some fucking or a solo cup of some fucking punch she made and i thought i'd wait to try until you could for my reaction. Here we go. Cheers. Oh, no. Whew. Jesus Christ, Mom. How did she that with some water? Because I'm a fucking hoe ass. Man, first of all, I pretty much just got back from uh, another Disneyland trip with the fam. Let me tell you, that shit was so fucking awesome. I went with, uh, it, it was like a big, a big group the whole time. We had some pretty close family friends and another group, and then my aunt and uncle and my cousins came. It was a ton of fucking fun, but the most fun part, no offense to anyone else, was hanging out with my, uh, my niece and nephew. Oh my god, they are three, and, uh, or two and three, respectively. Oh my god, they were having such a fucking blast. And I have a blast anyways, but it just enhanced my my time oh god i loved going on rides with them i gotta go on my niece's first ride with her ever it was so awesome the little mermaid she's super into that um bro we gotta talk about fucking star wars land though galaxy's edge dude that shit was so fucking dope like i know this sounds so stupid but being in line for that millennium falcon ride gives me chills it was so fucking well done. And just the land itself, I kept saying this while we were there, it just towers over you. And and Disneyland does a really good job of that anyways. Like, you are you can't see sort of any outside world, but this place is just, like, massive in scale, and it feels so authentic to, to the vision. And it was uh, pretty cool. The only thing that was stupid was the fucking cantina. It was like a... Uh, bar setting and we had reservations and they had strict rules about like you could only be there 45 minutes or whatever and they go in and there's just so much standing space like you can maybe get a booth but there's like you, there's there's nowhere to sit and there's fucking i don't know eight of us with two babies and we came in and they were like yeah so you guys can have this spot and as soon as these people leave you can sort of flood over into that spot too and we, uh, there's also no food, just drinks. I thought it was the dumbest fucking shit. Like, what a waste of space. Like, the biggest land you're gonna open. Because that, I mean, that's like the most anticipated fucking part of, oh my god, it just, it, it blew me away. But the Millennium Falcon ride was so much fucking fun, and it was so cool. You each have, like, jobs, and, uh, so there's, like, two engineers, two gunners, and two pilots. One of the pilots controls up, up and down, the other pilot controls left to right, and, like, the brakes and other various shit like that, but, um, I sucked at both. I, like, I sucked so fucking hard when my sister and I went, and I was doing, uh, up and down oh my god we we got there's a point score at the end and my sister and i got negative 1050 that's pretty fucked up um really wasn't i think it honestly might have been worse the next time i did it when i did left to right with my mom i think we might have gotten like a negative 1200 or something really fucking shitty at it but um i, I did every part dude it was awesome it was so cool. There was one night we were able to jump on that ride, like, no line, and then get right back on afterwards. 
with an even shorter line. It was crazy. We really expected that uh, that ride to be jammed, but we did it a lot. Doing Guardians was, of course, fun. Oh, dude. There was just so much cool shit, but Galaxy's Edge was definitely the highlight. Fucking, speaking of which, Episode 9 came out. The end of the Skywalker saga. Jesus Christ, does this shit get me emotional. And, uh, I gotta say, I'll give some non-spoiler thoughts and then get really into it, but I thought it was a really good movie. Overall, a great conclusion to the Skywalker saga, and I, I am not a fan of Episode Eight at all, and, um, I think J.J. Abrams did the best with what he was given. So, applause to him. Uh, now, spoiler talk. Um, just the opening scene with uh, Kylo Ren meeting fucking Palpatine and him saying he created Snoke. Liked that. That already tied up one loose end. Really don't give a fuck to inquire more about that. Um, but I thought it was cool that the emperor was like influencing kylo ren the whole time i thought that was a really dope fucking thing i thought palpatine just looked cool as shit like with you know he's like undead and fucking got bony fingers and attached to the big life support thing i thought that was cool as fucking shit um god there was so much like my, my mom said it best last night when i saw it again with her like no complaints really um when Chewie found out that Leia died. That was like the saddest fucking shit, dude. At one point, I looked to my left and my grandma and looked to my right and my mom and they were both blubbering messes. God damn, it was so fucking well done. I also really liked the ending where Rey buries Luke and Leia's lightsaber and like walks around the old farm and uh, like takes on the Skywalker moniker with the fucking yellow lightsaber modeled after her staff that was badass dude i thought that was so so fucking cool i know i'm sort of jumping all over the place from the movie i just had a lot of scattered thoughts about it because it's a pretty dense movie like when my mom told me she'd see it a second time today i was like dude it is definitely dense enough to warrant a second feeling there's a lot going on in that movie uh so much cool shit. I wish that they would have, like, really explored Finn's Force sensitivity more. Because he was obviously Force sensitive. I thought they made that clear. And J.J. Abrams said in, like, an exclusive screening or something that, um, that that's what he was going to tell Ray that he was Force sensitive. I don't know why they cut that. I don't know. We'll see. They could be doing spinoffs. But I thought it was a really good conclusion. I really liked the redemption of Ben Solo. I thought that was awesome. The, just the lightsaber fight between Kylo Ren and Rey on the uh, on the old Death Star, like, with the water. It was so fucking cool. Like, you could see the, the steam of the water from their lightsabers. And when they were forced pushing each other's sabers, like, the way it sort of... Oh, man really really like that's definitely one of the best star wars fight scenes ever i personally still think my mom's giving me shit about this yesterday i personally still think that the best lightsaber fight was anakin versus obi-wan in revenge of the sith oh my god and also while that's happening fucking yoda versus palpatine just jumping around all over the place god damn it that was so fucking cool I, I i don't think three is that bad a movie like i know i'm seeing through its flaws to a certain extent because i mean the cg is still fucking shit you know and it was just like so overwhelming but i think that's a decent movie and i definitely think that what revenge of the sith did for the the skywalker saga was more significant than what the rise of skywalker did um because it was like the last link bridging those gaps between how anakin became darth vader oh man i fucking love those movies so much i just recently beat that game too i don't know if i had beat it by the last time i recorded the second episode but 
Yeah, that game was fun as fuck, dude. I was totally into it. Um, there was definitely some frustrating things. Like, just just glitches where you, you jump and just go through the, the ground and there's nothing you can do about it. So that sort of pissed me off. But I also got spoiled because the um, first game I got when I bought myself a PlayStation was Spider-Man PS4. And that's just one of the fucking best games ever. So fucking good it was in my fucking apartment with my buddies it was like a running joke like i would disappear into my room like four hours at a time just come out oh my god i loved that game with all my heart yeah so i don't know how i got into that but overall good job jj abrams i'm satisfied i've also been watching the witcher that premiered uh not that long ago um it's interesting enough. It's it's pretty entertaining, I think. Oh man, my buddy sent me. Let's see what he has to say. I told him he should uh, he should come through and smoke. Well, I might have to pause it. No, no, I can't do that. I already started. Also, I'm sure you can hear some background noise. That would be. The niece and nephew I referred to, and slash or my mom, my dad, uh, and my two little brothers. Because I'm back at home for winter break, and it has been blissful. I just... It's almost like I didn't realize how much I don't like being in b Until I come home, Northman is just fucking so cool. Hold on. Let's see what... I can't believe it's Christmas tomorrow. It really snuck up on me. I was doing Christmas shopping till today because I'm an asshole. Oh, man. Oh, my sister's now texting me for food. How tempting. Okay, well, I have some shit to figure out. And I'm a little bit drunk, so I can't leave. I'm going to keep sipping on this punch. You know what else I did recently? I tried mushrooms. And pause for the drink. Oh. They were cool. I was into them. I don't know if I should be saying that on here. But, um, yeah, I tried them. Really don't want to fry my brain, so, you know can't really be doing that but uh i tried them and it was it was fun i had a really good time i was up at an undisclosed cabin it was snowing out so we got to walk around in the snow go into the sauna oh my god it was so so fucking awesome and then just sort of watch tv or rather i lay on the floor curled up in a blanket and watched the colors it was projecting onto the ceiling <laughs> my br my little brother let me borrow this big loud speaker with like it looks like the a half of a disco ball on top that just sh uh blasts lights to the music so that was cool as well needless to say i was pretty entertained the whole time uh, i've had nothing but an overwhelmingly positive experience doing that stuff Man, my th throat sounds so growly. Sound like fucking Batman. Yeah, they just keep adding people to the Batman cast, and uh, I just keep getting more excited for it. I just still wish Ben Affleck's Batman was getting made. I really want to check out this Titan show in the DC universe still, but I'm actually hearing it's not getting great reviews. God damn it! I need to get through The Witcher first. I really like Henry Cavill, and I think it's badass. It's just sort of hard to follow. Someone knocking on my door. I can't tell. I'm like in the middle of all the action when I'm here. The guest bedroom, right by the kitchen slash living room, the bathroom, and my little brother's room and my parents' room. Oh my god, Christmas is tomorrow morning. Man, I swear I can't wait. I might not even have trouble sleeping tonight. I have always had trouble sleeping on Christmas. And if I do, I'll just probably fucking 
work on some concept art. Yeah, I'm working on a working on a small book, perhaps. But um, I'm really working on my fucking jester drawing. I watch a lot of videos by Jim Lee, who is a famous comic book artist. Oh man, that dude does such cool work. I've always been good at drawing faces, pretty much. And like, I guess people more broadly. For, dude, for the longest time, I would always draw someone really good, except the legs would be so fucking short. Like, while I was doing it, I'd be like, yeah, and then, you know, you brush the, the eraser shavings off and take a good look at it. Every time I just made him like a midget with long arms, like a fucking monkey. Um, so, you know, I got out of that habit. Now it's just on to gesture drawing, which is basically drawing stuff that's not in a stoic pose. So it's sort of all over the place. Jim Lee always says to think about it as like an action figure. Like if you look at an action figure and you ripped the, the arms and legs off, like, use that basic fundamental shape to build a body. So I've been working on that a lot. I have to take a lot of pictures. Or, like, today I had my brother take a picture of me posing in a certain way so that I could try to draw better. Foreshortening just is really hard for me, which is... I don't know if I know how to explain this. It's like... Uh, the only example I can think of is if my fist, you take a picture of me and my fist is pointed directly at the camera. Like, what does that fist and the arm behind it look like? I have a really hard time just without any reference um, being able to understand how that works. But I'm getting there. I'm fucking getting there. I should start posting some of this on my own website I promote other people's art but I don't do my own but there's just something fucking stopping me for some reason maybe it's because it's all I don't know like random nerdy shit like everyone on my website it seems like has a pretty organized and like um, consistent consistent in both quality and the amount of posts actually being made uh, for their catalog and I just don't have that I just like to draw sometimes and I'll just draw a random fucking face and then throw it away you know before I moved last year I I drew this really like um, fundamental sketch of Venom with the Spider-Man character and it was pretty cool but it literally only took me like three minutes it was just something I was doing super quick and I crumpled it up and looked at it and I was like that's dope crumpled it up recycled it and walked away and then uh, the day I moved or soon before my sister gave it to me on a canvas like she found it she cut it out put it on a canvas and painted the whole thing i've got it hung up on my wall at home it was so dope she's a really talented artist <coughs> so is my little brother i'm also sick so i apologize if i'm like sniffling and shit this podcast is a little bit of a weird one given all the circumstances but i'm still doing it that's what fucking matters Oh my god, this drink is strong. But just like this podcast, I'm gonna keep chugging through. Huh. That makes it sound like it's chore. I know this is only the third episode, but I like doing this. Um, maybe it's because I just have so many opinions and so much shit to say that I just need somewhere to dump it. Maybe someone will hear it and be into it. Um, I just listened to David Spade's book. David Spade is so fucking funny to me. He has a really funny show right now. I can't even think of what it's called. I just watch a bunch of clips on YouTube. Um, I know him as a kid from uh, Emperor's New Groove. He was Cusco. And I believe John Goodman was... Uh, Pacha was his name, I believe. I haven't seen that movie in so long, but I really fucking love, love that movie. Underrated Disney film. So is Treasure Planet. I said that to my mom today. 
it's just like no one ever fucking talks about that movie and given I haven't seen it in a long time but I remember that movie being super super awesome I have a picture with that dude at Disneyland when I was super little on his like solar board I always thought that was so fucking cool I just I grew up on Disney movies it was just the VHS days I loved the VHS I just I tried to get one from Valley Village and it didn't work which was my fault I think I said that on one of these is that what this podcast is gonna be me just talking about the same shit over and over again how many times have I ranted about Game of Thrones already probably more times than I have episodes because that last season just made me so fucking mad well so I I went to Best Buy yesterday to Christmas shop for people and I saw that fucking uh, that disc the season 8 DVD and I was like god fucking damn it fuck you I got my little brother it too I don't know if he can fucking hear me or if he's even upstairs or what that'll sound like when I play that back later but uh, he, he'll be really pumped about that he loves those movies really like the original as well I actually went into a toy store today uh, to look for s- some shit and I found um, a old Pennywise action figure and a new Pennywise action figure and I wanted to get both to go with it but I was already spending like a ton of money because my other little brother wanted a life-size Stark gauntlet which was a hundred bucks at Disneyland but I couldn't fit it in my fucking suitcase and I saw it today and it was a hundred and thirty bucks and I was like well fuck it I'm doing it so I did I bought my mom some stuff and I bought my niece some stuff so I was able to get everything done in, in two days I feel pretty good about it ooh it's not like you know this will be out by the time they can you know it'll still be a surprise I am so fucking pumped I honestly don't know what I what I'll get I didn't ask for much this year we did have a Disneyland trip so you know that's like pretty much a Christmas gift but there really it really wasn't like Christmas just snuck up on me this year and there really wasn't much shit I could think of but the shit I could think of was expensive and that's usually how it goes when you're 20 approaching 21 god I hate the sound of that it makes me feel old and I know how ignorant that sounds but I'm gonna be 21 people are gonna be asking me to buy them shit and I'm gonna be like nope Go fuck yourself. And the drink slowly gets easier. Still chasing it with water. Because I'm a little bitch. I gotta sit my in front of this. I'm so sorry. I shouldn't be doing this. Oh, right. That's all taken care of. I'm sorry. I'm not going to do that again. I shouldn't text. I already said I wouldn't eat on here. Which sucks, because my sister said there's food out there. And whatever the fuck my mom was whipping up, it smelled fucking delicious. Woo. After this podcast, I'm going to go out there and fuck up some food my guys now honestly might have to get this one short for many reasons I still have some fucking homework to do oh oh no I said I wasn't going to do that but I just had to reply to my mom cause she's my mom and I love her I love that woman so much man going to Disneyland with my grandma was so much fun too she is just a little Canadian who and I love her. Oh, going back for more drink. No sort of feed. It's usually how it starts. Oh. Oh. 
I don't think I can express into words how much I like. Excuse me. Jesus. I don't think I can express into words how much I love Nightmare Before Christmas. What an excellent film. And if you didn't watch it as a kid, you're probably not going to be into it, but uh, that movie was a huge part of my childhood. I love it because you can play it all through the holiday seasons, like the fucking Halloween. You can even play it for Thanksgiving for whatever fucking reason and for Christmas. God damn it, it's just like... And that's, that's sort of how Disneyland does it, too. Because if you don't know, the Haunted Mansion ride, uh, from, like, September 28th to, like, January 1st, probably, is, um, is re-themed after the, the Nightmare Before Christmas. Which was super cool to do this time with my niece and nephew, because they also love that movie. Oh, man, my... Nephew is super into dinosaurs, and there's this train you could go on that'll take you around the park. And uh, it's got some little entertaining parts, and one of which takes you through the Grand Canyon and then the Grand Canyon with dinosaurs. And so, you know, we're going on the train and we're all super pumped because we know how into it he's going to be. Sure enough, as soon as we roll up, Brachiosaurus! <laughs> just He's just screaming and starts naming them all off. Oh my god, it was so awesome. You know, I just gotta say, uh, back to the, the fucking Star Wars thing, Ray being a Palpatine was something I liked. Okay, I'm gonna say that first. And I will say that the only part I liked about The Last Jedi was that her parents were nobody. Because from the start of the sequels, I was like, she doesn't need to be anyone. And people were like, well, why is she force sensitive? And it was like, okay, well, why the fuck is Obi Wan force sensitive? Why the fuck is Mace Windu force sensitive? Like, it doesn't matter. But I, I thought that was a cool way to tie things in. Um, <coughs> excuse me. I thought that was a cool thing, or a cool way to tie things in. But I just thought it was so funny because I remember when the Force Awakens came out, reading a theory that she was a Palpatine because of the way she, like, sort of made a diving maneuver with her lightsaber when she was fighting Kylo Ren, which is just, like... I mean, there's no way they were planning that from the beginning. That was a retcon, for sure. Um, and the way she dove with her lightsaber was definitely not evidence of that, but I, I just know when I watched it, I sort of chuckled because I was like, whoever wrote that article feels so vindicated right now. Good for them. Maybe it was, you know, all planned from the start. That was meant to be a hint, but... I don't think they had an overall plan for the sequel trilogy the same way they do with Marvel movies. I think they were just... Here's a director, here's a writer. We'll let them take it. I don't know, though. Fucking episode 8 was just such a mess. Ryan Johnson... I really want to see Knives Out, and I really liked Looper, but suck my dick. You fucking pussy. You fucked that up so bad. And I'm sorry. That was, that was a little harsh, but that movie was the key component in this whole trilogy um, cohesively, like, how the fuck did you do it, dude? Like, you really had to try to fuck up that art. You destroyed Luke Skywalker as a character, and, and I want to fight you for it. But, you know, I don't want to get fucking sued. Maybe I'll get sued for talking all this shit. Can you get sued for talking shit like that? I should know this if I'm gonna be talking mad shit. Well, I already did it, so I'm going to continue. Suck my dick, Ryan Johnson. I really want to see Knives Out. So I'll, I'll give you that olive branch, and I'll give you Looper, but... it's it, You didn't go in to this fucking franchise thinking, like, I'm going to make a continuation of the last one for the fans. This motherfucker was just like, I'm going to stir shit up in this franchise. And you're a bitch for that. God 
damn it, dude. You fucked that up so bad. Luke just threw... You know what I thought was, like, the biggest fuck you to Ryan Johnson in all of The Rise of Skywalker? When Rey goes to throw the lightsaber and Luke catches it and is like, a Jedi's weapon deserves more respect. I was like, fuck yeah, it does. Fuck you, RJ. The, the the fact that Yoda was a puppet was cool. Um, I'll give him that too. Like there was some cool stuff. It it wasn't all bad, but it just like just dis- it really destroyed my hope for the franchise. And JJ Abrams just redeemed it and paid it all off. But he was given like nothing to work with after what Ryan Johnson did, and that that was the problem. It just ended, and you were like, what the fuck? Like, Luke just died from using the Force. Really? That's bullshit, dude. I'm... I'm sorry. Maybe I shouldn't be raging this hard about it. I just get so passionate about movies, and Star Wars in particular. I did this thing, not this last Disneyland trip, but another one called The Void, which I believe is a, like... Just something that's funded by Disney. There's only one in Disneyland and one in Disney World. And it's a a virtual reality experience where you wear a headset and a vest. And, like, for the Star Wars one, you had a blaster. Um, And instead of it being, like, you just stand in one place and do your thing, there's a whole arena. So when you're pressing buttons, you're actually pressing buttons. You know, they, like, we did an Avengers one. This little, excuse me. Jesus, excuse me. We did an Avengers one this last time that we went, like, at one point you're going through Doctor Strange's Sanctum Sanctorum or whatever the fuck it's called, and the window's open, and you could, like, feel the breeze and the, the snow coming through. It was super cool. <laughs> they, they sort of told us beforehand, though, that they were going to be walking around. And obviously you can't see them, but they were going to be walking around to make sure... <coughs> Excuse me. You stay on course. And, uh... And at one point, I stepped on this dude's foot. I was, like, five feet in front of anyone else, and I just stepped on someone's foot. It was so fucking funny. Um, We sort of forgot that we're doing fucking nasty shit. We had to break into a bunch of teams, and the first team was me, my cousin, my, my dad, and my uncle, and it was just rowdy. It was so cool, though. It's basically, like... It's called uh, Avengers Damage Control, I believe, and man, that bone is sweating. And you uh, have like Shiri makes a Wakandan Iron Man suit essentially, and and that's what you wear. So you pick a color, and he's using the same suit. Then you go and fucking fight Ultron with all the Avengers. It was so cool, so cool. The Star Wars one was also cool. Like at one point, so I I believe believe you're infiltrating as fake stormtroopers if i remember it right and um at one point you're like fighting a lava monster and it like barfs shit on a door and when you're stepping past the door the ground was like squishy it was so well done and it's so cool because they can just change out the experience because when we did the star wars one they were doing that oh no yeah, this last time we went, they were doing Star Wars and Avengers. So it was like for the first half of the day, they'd do one. Second half of the day, they'd do the other. And the other time we went, it was Star Wars and Wreck-It Ralph. I don't know what the Wreck-It Ralph one would be like, but uh, both the other ones I did were so cool. And I wholeheartedly believe that is the future of gaming. <sighs> Huh. I'm running out of water to chase it down. Jesus Christ. Yeah, this fucking witchcraft class has been sort of kicking my ass so much reading. I'm getting it done, though, and I'm fucking busting ass. I've been busting ass on this fucking paper all day. And it's a good paper so far. I just have, like, two more pages to go, probably. Man, while I was in Disneyland, I got my buddy a... Uh, great redwood 
the tree just in a little tube, and I really want to give it to him so he can plant it at his cabin or do whatever he wants with, but I know he's going to appreciate that. Fuck, I wanted to give it to him that one day, but I forgot because I got stoned, and that's how it goes when you're a chronic smoker, I guess. 7.45. Okay, well, if I finish this in the next 20 minutes or so, I can uh, bust out that paper still and work on the story. Time is the enemy. It always has been and always will be. <coughs> Excuse me. That is a modified Game of Thrones quote. Can't remember the name of the dude who said it but it was in season 7 and he said it to John and it was like death is the enemy he has always been the enemy and I've I, I, I've always low key sort of wanted to be a voice actor I don't want to use that voice as a segue into that in a way that would make anyone or myself think I'm, I'd be good at it but I've always thought that'd be a fun job Do, do, do. Oh god, I know I said I wouldn't fucking keep texting, but I had to. I'm sorry. Someone's coming through. Yeah, so we are going to wrap this one up a little bit. Sure. Can I do that when this is only the third episode? Of course I can, because it's my fucking podcast. <coughs> Excuse me. You're going to have to suck it up, buttercup. Buttercup. Oh, I can hear weaving him. God, I want to bring those little kids in. But I don't trust them in front of an expensive laptop. I don't even trust myself, dude. I, like, I have a rule about no drinks on the same surface. Sort of makes life a little bit more difficult than it needs to be sometimes, but I've never spilled anything on it, so... Oh! Oh! Yep. <laughs> Those little fuckers. I have so much fun playing with them. It's like... It, it's ridiculous. Again, I know that sounds stupid and cliche, but... That's like a chance for me to also exert the childlike energy that I have. And it's so much fucking fun. I, I just... I suck at tickling. I tickle too hard, I guess. Don't know what it is. Every time I tickled my brothers growing up, can't fucking do it. I don't know what it is. It's like a snapping. Oh, I did it. Oh, well, I guess I made that up in my head. I thought I couldn't snap. Definitely can't whistle. Like, maybe if the fucking humidity's right or high, like, I don't know, the stars align. Yeah. That's as as good as it gets. Like, I can't even believe I did that. The problem is I suck in and not out. Or, <laughs> the, the problem is I suck in instead of blowing out. I never learned to do that. Oh, I almost got it there. No, no, that's embarrassing. The people who can, like... I don't even know what it's called. Is it a dog whistle where they basically make like a okay sign with their hand and put it under their tongue? I've got a buddy who can do that and I've never been able to pull it off. That can come useful sometimes. You always hear that in a crowd. There's always someone who can do that and they will fucking do it. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Oh, I can't. Oh, God. Oh, God. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm doing it again. Ba -ba 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 -ba. Sorry. That was rude of me to arrange plans before I did this. But hey, it's actually still going pretty long. I had to lock the door so the babies don't come in. They just come in all the time wondering where I'm at. 
usually while I'm napping. So, I lock the door when I take naps. The problem is, all the food is in my house. So people come in and out all the time. And if I lock the door, it's like a, it's like a no-go. People can't access the grub. Huh. Uh. I can't handle my alcohol. I mean, like, no, that that's incorrect. When I'm drunk, I can handle it. You know what I mean? But I, the act of getting drunk, ugh, can't do it. Really, really don't like it. But Bacardi, when, when I am, Bacardi's how I do it. I found Bacardi lemon one time with my buddy. Actually, the buddy's coming over. And, uh, and mix it with Sprite, and that was the shit, dude. I know that's super fruity, and I don't give a fuck. Go fuck yourself. It was so good. Have not been able to find Bacardi Lime since. Or Bacardi Lemon since. Did find Bacardi Lime worse than regular Bacardi. And then I found black and gold. And I was like, well, I'm going to have to try both of those. So I tried gold. All right, that's all right. And the black has been sitting in my freezer in Bellingham for a while now. But recently when I was at QFC, I found, um, like, dragon fruit or something. So now I'm going to have to try that shit, too. It's funny. That was the same QFC where I found the lemon. It's like they have some exclusive flavors or some shit. But Oh, my God. I... Still have some witchcraft stuff I have to do. That is such a depressing realization. I just really, after, you know, seven on this this whole time, I just really want to do something creative. Now I gotta work on the witchcraft stuff. Well, that is responsibility for you. Dude, for whatever reason, my eczema was so bad in California. Look at California. It's usually always better there, but it's winter, I guess. So I pretty much get up every morning and jump in a vat of lotion. I've got skin like a dragon. Oh, God. Oh! <gasps> Bottom of the cup. Oh, hell. That's so fucking grody. I am gonna have to get some some grub and sober up before I do any real world shit. Alright, folks. Well, that is a very awkward ending to the third episode of the Weasley Update. I will see you next time. Peace out, bitches. <laughs>